friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this surgery is dedicated to ophthalmology residents all over the world we are going to learn sics small incision cataract surgery through this video this is the superior rectus brittle suture this helps in keeping the eyeball stable conjunctival peritomy becomes easier weight field cautery becomes very much comfortable so it is good for beginners to if they use this superior rectus brittle suture and now conjunctival peritomy conjunctival peritomy is being done from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock for about 2 o'clock hours and now bipolar weight field cautery is done expert surgeons may not do this but for a beginner surgeon who is learning SICS this is a very much essential step but don't do too much cautery do only mild cautery touch on the blood vessels and not on other areas of the sclera and now put the main incision this is a 50 number Bart Parker blade and this is an incision of about 5.5 millimeter in this case we are going to put a lens of 5.25 millimeter so 5.5 millimeter incision is good enough and the nucleus is soft so it will come very easily in total through a 5.5 millimeter incision this is how we make the tunnel go into clear cornea sweep backward and left and then sweep backward and to the right for making the tunnel from one side to the other side I usually start at the center make the tunnel on the left side from center and then from center to the right side thus I complete the tunnel and now we have to do capsulorexis this is a sideboard at 9 o'clock visco is injected into the anterior chamber we are having good red glow this is omni glow attached to a Leica 690 so without staining the capsule we can do this rexis if we don't have red glow we can stain the anterior capsule with tripan blue dye and very easily we can do an capsulorexis and now we're going to open the tunnel now go to the anterior extreme of the sclerocorneal tunnel and then go enter into the anterior chamber and cut when you go forward cut from one end to the other end and you have opened the tunnel and now hydro dissection is being done my plan was 
to collapse the nucleus by hydro itself and it happens in many instances but in this case just by hydro it didn't collapse into the anterior chamber so I inject visco take two Sinsky hooks and by manually I rotate the nucleus and on nucleus is just behind one instrument is just behind the nucleus the other instrument rotates and thus it comes into the anterior chamber and now this is an irrigating vectus see how smoothly we can deliver the nucleus and now a lot of epinucleus is there it is coming out in this way yes so we have removed the nucleus and epinucleus and now we have to remove the cortical matter first time irrigating some fluid towards the cornea because some cortical matter sticks to the cornea if it gets dislodged visibility improves and now I am removing the cortex going through the sideboard and see in this case I could remove whole of the cortex going through the sideboard and this is the south sideboard cortex I'm trying to hold it yes I could hold that and remove it so cortical matter has been removed this is a chunk of epinucleus it has come out and now an intraocular lens is to be implanted antechamber and capsular bag is being filled up with visco this is 2% HPMC and this is a 5.25 millimeter optic rigid intraocular lens with the help of a MacPherson's forceps the IOL is placed in the capsular bag and now the visco the 2% HPMC that has been used for implanting the intraocular lens must be removed thoroughly there are many surgeons expert surgeons who don't use visco for IOL implantation they use irrigation through the side port and implant the intraocular lens but for beginner surgeons use visco but remove the visco very nicely unless we remove visco thoroughly there can be visco induced raised intraocular pressure the patient becomes very much uncomfortable and there is pain sometimes so after removing visco the antechamber is formed very nicely we have to place the simco in this way there should not be any particle at this time going from the main incision into the anterior chamber yes and now as I feel the intraocular pressure I think the intraocular pressure is on the lower side I want to increase the intraocular pressure so what I do is I take an irrigating probe which is used in FECO surgery and use only one stream of this to go through the side port into the anterior chamber 
the other stream goes outside. And now I feel the intraocular pressure. It is much better. And the wound is nicely sealed. This is a bit of moxifloxacin. Feel the intraocular pressure again and it is fine. And now, how to oppose the conjunctiva to the limbus? I use two ways. One is subconjunctival injection and sometimes I use a releasable suture. Yes, if we just give this subconjunctival injection of gentamicin and dexamethasone, the conjunctiva comes forward and gets opposed to its original. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. We must learn SICS. There are cases where you cannot do FACO. The cataract is so hard. And if we try FACO, we can damage the cornea forever. So it is a must learn surgery.